loves you. Bring joy to your heart right now. So let's close our eyes and pray. Thank you.
us sing of your words and what you've done for us, God.
your name. Lord, we thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. God, we don't ever want to forget. We don't ever want to go numb to the fact, to this reality, Lord, that you shed your blood. And your blood ran red on the cross for us. Because of your great, unfailing, amazing love, Lord. Wash us clean. All of our sins. Yesterday's sins, today's sins, tomorrow's sins have been cleansed by your blood. And Father, we are eternally grateful for what you've done for us. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we owe it all to you. God, we continue to worship you. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise. May your praise ever be on our lips. God, we pray and we ask that we may remain in a state of worship even as we listen to your word this morning. God, that as we listen to your message that you prepared for us, we may continue to worship you, continue to stand in awe of who you are, to stand in wonder of who you are, Lord, and how amazing your love is for us. Father, would you teach us to be more like you today? God, would you speak to us, God? We worship you, we thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Again, and we're excited to hear his message. He has a good word for us today. The title of his message is Servanthood, the Key to Your Destiny. So let's welcome up PC, everyone. So, do I need to 
try something else or just okay. All right. Um, can we all read together on the count of two? One, two, three. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. All right. Wonderful words. Wonderful words. All right. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your presence in this room. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you will give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation this morning as we study your word. And we lift up the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. God, even as we study your word, we're lifting up Jesus. We're lifting you up, God. So this morning, God, we ask you will speak to each and every one of us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, this verse said that Jesus came to serve. So he modeled, he modeled his leadership by being a servant. Alright, so today we, we, we want to dwell, we want to um, study a little bit more about servanthood. Because I believe that one day when we meet with God, all right. So no matter what we are going to pursue in our lives, whether we're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO, maybe you know going into politics, a politician, but you know one day when we when we meet with God, when our life is over and we meet with God, you know God will not call us by our title in life. God will not call us, hey, you know my CEO, hey, my lawyer, hey, my doctor, no. But the Bible says that God, when He sees us, one day He will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. servant. Amen? So, so, you know, God is seeking, from, from our life, God is seeking a character, an attitude of like a servant. Because Jesus modeled that he became a servant. He came to serve, right? What is the definition of a servant? A servant is somebody who gives himself or herself to make other people's life better. Right? Jesus gave himself, his life, to serve us. So today we're gonna we're gonna study from the book of Genesis. You know, last time when I came, I kind of shared like stories, and then we we get into deeper in that story and learn, you know. Um, so today we will do the same. We're going to read from Genesis chapter 24. Um, this is what I want to do today. So I'm going to read one verse, and then you guys read the other verse. We're going to take time like that, okay? The whole, the whole thing. So, now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. So Abraham said to all the servants of his house, And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. Next. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and departed, for all his master's goods were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to be a town outside the city, but had a well of water at evening time, the time when the women go out to the water. Then he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day, and show kindness to my master Abraham. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Of 
Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the throat, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. So, how many of you heard this story before? Alright, so this is, this is the story about Rebecca, right? So she is kind of like, you know, the, the, the character that, that came up. So, the servant of Abraham went to look for for a wife, for his master's son, Isaac, all right? So the story has kind of like four characters, okay? Abraham, Isaac, Eliezer, the servant, and Rebecca, okay? But actually, this story is talking about the Trinity of God, all right? Abraham, the father, right, represents God the Father. Isaac represents the Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Eliezer represents the servant that was sent, who? The Holy Spirit, right? And Rebecca, the bride. Who's the bride of Christ? We are, right? The church, okay? So this story kind of talks about the Trinity of God. The Father sent his servant to find a bride for his son and who is going to be the bride who is going to be are we going to be the, the church the bride of Christ they will you know be, be the perfect bride for the son Jesus amen amen, amen. so um, this is this is really kind of cool because um, Rebecca uh, the, the kind of like the ending of this story Rebecca became the wife of Isaac. And how many of you know that 39 generations later, you know, out of their descendants, out of, you know, so Abraham, Isaac, or Isaac, Rebecca, came, what's their son, son's name? Jacob, right? So, and then 39 generations later came Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. So this is a, wonderful story of how you know God put together this marriage you know to to bring his son Jesus Christ now today we're going to learn from from this kind of short story about Rebecca just how she came up in the story and learn some traits about servanthood okay so we, we're going to today I'm just going to focus on three qualities three qualities of servanthood can you turn to somebody and say, this is going to be good? Oh, come on, guys. I think we can do better than that. Turn to somebody else and say, this is going to be good. <laughs> All right. So, three qualities of servanthood. Number one, servanthood is willing. Right? If you want to take notes, servanthood is willing. So, it was the willingness of Rebecca that attracted Eliezer. He tested her by asking for some water, right? You know, being a young girl, you know, out there being approached by a stranger asking for water, you know, what is the normal response? Ladies? No. Your parents probably say, don't talk to strangers, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy. I gotta finish my work. I gotta go, right? So, but, but Rebecca was willing to give him water, right? And she said, not only will I give you, I will draw water for your camels also. So the key word here is the word will, okay? Will is kind of like the, the, the base, the root word for will. She didn't complain, you know? 
she did not do it with expectation for reward. He, did he offer like, hey, can I pay for your water? You know, I got lots of money here. I got camels lined up. You know, I got gold in the back. I'll pay you a bit. You know, you know. She actually did it without the expectation for reward. That's willingness. Okay, willingness is when you don't expect to be paid. You don't expect that you will actually come out better. That's willingness. So, willingness makes you energetic and motivated. Listen to this, okay? Energy always follows the willing. Fatigue follows the unwilling. One more time. This is kind of deep, right? Energy always follows the willing. Fatigue follows the unwilling. How many of you feel tired easily when you do something you don't want to do? <laughs> yeah, you're honest, thank you. you know, um, when our actions are motivated by willingness, the energy comes. Enthusiasm yeah. comes. Alright, so, you know, this is, this is my third time coming into your church. You know, thank you again for having me. And each time I came here, I'm, I'm so blessed. Um, you know, and I'm very encouraged to see like a lot of people are serving here. Um, but today, I just kind of want to, you know, take a little time to just recognize your leaders. You know, you have um, Josh, Caleb, Maddie, Nick. You know, you guys kind of like the good JJ, right? You guys help to run this, this service, to run the small groups, you know, and and it's actually taking a lot of your time, right? You have to discuss things, you have to plan over things. Joshua there, you gotta keep, you know, reminding people that will come, you know, to speak. And, you know, every time I came here, I see them smiling, you know. On Sunday morning when I come here, when they, they, when they greet me at the parking lot, I see, big smile and when I come to the room they're practicing and they're smiling at me. So what do I see? I see willingness. You know, they gotta spend the time, they gotta be here earlier than everybody else and they are not doing it, you know, for any benefit, for any reward. Tell you guys a secret. They're not getting paid to do this. Alright? They're doing this because they love the Lord and the, they love you all. Can we give a big clap to them? <laughs> so, energy follows the willing. Enthusiasm will come. If you read Genesis chapter 24, you know, and I counted this, seven times Rebecca said, and I will, and I will, and I will, seven times. Servanthood is an action that starts with willingness. God is looking for the willing hearts. How many of how many of how many people in this room would say, God, you know, I have a willing heart and I want to serve you. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen? All right. Number two. Servanthood accepts. Everybody say servanthood accepts. Servanthood accepts. All right. Rebecca was willing to do the job, and not just that. She did the job well. She excelled in serving. Wait, 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 PC. Right? How can you say she excelled in serving? How do you define excellent? You know? How do you guys normally define excellent? How do you, what, you know, what is it that you measure to say somebody did a good job or not a good job? Maybe somebody can give me like, you know, comments, inputs. How do you say somebody did a good job? Perfection. Oh, I'm kind of scared of the word perfection. <laughs> perfection. It's never going to be perfect. <laughs> okay, so the key word here is until. Alright, so if I am going to give a definition for excellence is excellence is defined 
by completing the task. As simple as that, right? Mom said, hey, can you throw the trash out after you come back? Good job, right? Completed the task. Excellent, right? So the keyword here is until. So, you know, or the words of my former boss, get it done, <laughs> right? Just get it done. I don't care how you do it, just get it done, all right? So, um, many people start something, but they don't complete it. How many of you are, you know, you, you have that experience. You start something and maybe you lose the energy, you lose the motivation, and you're like, oh, you didn't complete it. But God is not like that. God always completes His work. Wow. Believe it or not, God, when He wants to do something, He always completes the work. So, can we read Hebrew 12, verse 2, together, yeah? One, two, three. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who looked for the joy that was set before him and endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus is the author and what? Finisher. He completed the job. When God had a salvation plan for humanity, he completed the plan. Can you guys imagine if Jesus came to earth but he didn't go to the cross? Can you imagine if Jesus went to the cross but he didn't rise from the dead? Then our salvation will not be complete. But Jesus completed the work of salvation for us. So, I want to share with you a, a really quick story. Um, how many of you have been watching the Olympics? Yeah, the games? Kind of cool, right? Every time you see like a game, it's like so inspiring. So I want to share something that happened in 1968. So, John Stephen Aquari. So back in 1968, it was, the game was in Mexico. And the final event was the marathon. So the stadium was packed. And there was so much excitement for this athlete from, you know, from uh, Ethiopia, you know, kind of like the star, but not him, right? The, the crowd kind of erupted as this Ethiopian runner, you know, entered the stadium, finished the race. But we're not talking about the Ethiopian runner. We're talking about John Stephen Akwari from Tanzania. Tanzania. Okay, he he was having a he was having a difficult time during the race. So he fell. And, you know, he, he got hurt. His muscles were aching and, and he, had, he had injury. He had serious leg injury and the officials actually wanted him to stop. Don't run anymore. But he said, no, 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 I gotta keep running. So he was limping as he ran 12, the last 12 kilometers of the, to, to the finish line. So he actually ran and finished one hour after the Ethiopian runner had finished, one hour. So, when he arrived at the finishing line, he, he collapsed. And then, after that, you know, he was interviewed. He was interviewed and the reporter asked him, hey, why, why you didn't just drop out? You know, the official already told you to just quit it. You know, you wouldn't, it, it, it doesn't make sense, right? You just, you should have to quit. Why did you keep running? And Aquari answered, you know, this is, this answer kind of like, you know, very famous and just became a quote that was repeated again and again. He said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish the race. Is that good? That's an attitude of a champion. You know, doesn't have to be perfect, but you gotta finish it. You gotta complete the task. Okay? So that's the that's our definition of excellence. That we wanna be the people of God that excel. When God starts something, when we start something, we wanna complete it, we wanna finish it. So that God can tell us, hey, you're my good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. 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 So um you know, 
this kind of like this this past um, week kind of make me wonder, make me thinking about what are the, the things that maybe I started in my life that I I didn't get to complete, you know. So I hope this can also be something that you, you guys will, will be thinking today, you know, maybe the rest of the week. And then just be humble enough to, to take take your phone, you know, you have a note app, and just write down, hey, you know, a couple of years ago, I put there, I want to read Bible cover to cover. I started in Genesis, and I never got to leave Egypt. <laughs> you know, and you know, just be humble enough and say, you know, God help me. Maybe I, what, what do I need to complete the task? Maybe I need to come to somebody and say, hey, could you be my accountable partner? Could somebody help me read with me? All right, amen. amen. Servanthood excels. Number three, and we're gonna close. Servanthood does not delay. So she said, drink, my lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until I have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the throat, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. The key word here is quickly. All right? This means that she did not delay her work. So I talked about willingness earlier, right? And then I talked about Excel completed. Now, I want to give you guys this. If you if you can understand this thing, this concept, this truth, it will help you for the rest of your life so much, all right? And it's this. The degree of your willingness is measured by the speed of your execution. One more time. The degree of your willingness is measured by the speed of your execution. All right? So, have you ever felt that when your parents ask you to do something, they often want you to do it right away? <laughs> right? And they probably will repeat it until you get it done. Um, do you know why? Why, why is that? Why? Why, why do, you know, why do people, when they want something, you know, they want it right away? Guys, come on, help me out. They're impatient. They're impatient. <laughs> okay. Any, anyone else? That's, that's actually pretty good. But, um, you know, maybe your parents are patient too, you know. But, I thought about it, right? Why do people... You know, when, um, um, when you go to, to McDonald's, do you expect that you're going to wait 10 minutes for your burger? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who said yes? I've <laughs> never been to McDonald's. No, you get your burgers within like one minute or less, right? That's, that's McDonald's. They are good at, you know, giving it right away. Why, why did they invent that system to make burgers like, you know, so fast? Because they understood the truth that people don't want to wait. It's as simple as that. People don't like to wait. I don't like to wait. You know, when I, when I want something, I'm like, God, you know, can it be faster, right? I don't want to wait. You know, so... It just like okay. I'm sorry, I kind of talk about my boss a little bit earlier. It wasn't like to say bad things about him, but yeah. you know, um, a lot of time, like in, in the past, like when my boss wanted me to to finish a job, when did he want me to finish it? Wanted me to finish it yesterday, right? So it's it's, it's something funny. Um, so and and when we go to to a restaurant, when we go to a pharmacy, when we go to a car repair shop, when you learn about 
complaints, like you know, they have this like customer reviews and all that. What is the biggest complaint that people have? It's always it's taking too long. People just don't like to wait. So again, so when your parents ask you to do something, they just don't like to wait. You know, they don't like to to wait and then have to repeat it. So if you understand this concept one more time, the degree of your willingness is, the, is measured by the speed of your execution, right? Then you will not delay. Then you will not want to make your parents wait. If you can get it done that moment, you don't need to wait one, two hours later to do it. Servanthood doesn't delay. But I have to say this to you. The enemy often lie to us and tell us this. You still got time. Oh man. That's a lie that we've been getting. You still got time. Isn't that why we procrastinate? Isn't that why we, you know, sometimes you know things just get delayed for for so long. So, you know, I just I just kind of want want you guys to be to be thinking. This this is you know today next couple of days would you just would you just think about this you know this this message. Is there any area in your life that you put a hold on hold while while God wanted to be done? Oof. Wow. Now we're getting heavy here. Is there an area in your life, okay, that you put on hold that God actually wants you to do? Now, secondly, we talk about servanthood today. Are there people that, while I was talking, or maybe later today or tomorrow, are there people in your life that God began to remind you about? Maybe, maybe God wants you, God wants you to help them, to serve them. All right. Um, this this famous pastor up in in Reading, Bill Johnson. And I read a lot of his books. He's he's really awesome, and he's kind of like deep. When you know when I listen to his messages, I'm like, you know, it takes me sometimes to process. But he said this thing. Um, next slide. Okay. This is from Bill Johnson. Everything we do at church is helping to bring the souls to Jesus. It's really kind of cool, you know. Everything we do at church is helping to bring the souls to Jesus. Whether you welcome people at the parking lot, whether you are singing in the worship team, you know, run the sound system, thank you for clicking the PowerPoint. Um, whatever you do, you're helping to bring the souls to come to Jesus. So God is inviting us to co-labor with Him in ministry, in, ser ser in serving. He wants to do the work, and He can get the job done. But He chooses to use us to complete the work. So, just, just want to close with the, um, with the story. A couple of years ago, um, my, my wife and I, we got invited to attend a, a wedding in the Bay Area, you know, so uh, it was the church that I was with in the Bay Area, I was serving there, and then during the, the dinner, um, they, they um, set me up to be in the same table as my previous cell group members, so I was the, the small group leader at the time, so because my wife, um, she met me here. In, in the church here in, in LA. So she, she didn't know how my life was back then, you know, in the Bay Area. So um, we were sitting next to uh, one sister that came to my cell group. Her name is, her name is Angel. And she, she was just sharing her life, you know. She, she grew, at that point, she already graduated from uh, UC Berkeley. And she actually, decided after after graduation that she would go to a third world country and to serve the home for one year of her life. So 
you know, and and I was like, wow, that's. I still remember when you know back in the day when when uh, Angel and her brothers started coming to our church, they weren't talking, you know, they they were quiet, and and I remember just going going you know to their home to pick them up to bring them to a small group, try to try to create like a conversation in the car, you know, try to ask them questions and, you know, all I get is just like a, a one word answer, you know, but as they stayed in a, in a small group, they came to church, God began to touch their lives and and she opened up, you know, her brother Albert, they opened up, they gave their life to Christ and after graduation, she went to serve the Lord for one year. So that night, when after we finished the dinner and, and I was drive, you know, I was driving with my wife and in the car she she just said this, you know, I still remember she said, Wow, your 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 house in heaven will be a big mansion. She said that your house in heaven will be a big mansion. I was like I was like, why? You know, she said, Well, your small group member gave her life to God and went out to mission for a year, you know, so, you know, I was kind of like downplaying things, I was like, oh no, it's really the community, the church, you know, everybody kind of helped, you know, but inside of my heart, I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, but, you know, what I want to say is, whatever we do in the kingdom of God, will be worth it, because people are worth it. When we get when we get to serve other people, it's an opportunity for us to co-labor with the Father, co-labor with God, also co-labor with the Holy Spirit. And today, with this message, we learn that from the life of Rebecca, that servanthood starts with a willing heart. Servanthood excels, completes the job. Servanthood does not delay. Now, are we willing? to be the church that responds to God and say, Lord, use me however you want to use me, that one day when we face, when we meet God face to face, He will say, good job, my good and faithful servant. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, that we get to learn today about your heart that you want us to, to serve just the same as the Son of God came not to be served but to serve and to be a ransom for many. Father God, we just want to give you our lives. However small we are, however young we are, however inexperienced, however immature we are, God, all we are are yours. Friends, can I just invite you just for a minute, in your own ways, can you just respond to God, can you just pray to Him? Whether you are just telling Him that you love Him, you thank Him, or maybe you want to like rededicate your life to Him. Maybe there are things that you haven't completed in the past that you want to complete. I just want to give you a minute, can you just... In your own ways, just respond to God.
on me. Let's also ask God to give us a servant home. Just like Rebecca. And more than Rebecca, like Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Please, please, please. 
before you. God, we humble ourselves before you. Lord, we thank you. Jesus, you're going to have to come. Jesus, you are God, holy God, holy man. Yet you came to this earth to serve. You came, Lord, to let me entitle the worst of that crucifixion. Lord, would you teach us to imitate your humility? Would you teach us to imitate your servanthood? We thank you for your love. We thank you for setting an example for us to follow. God, we pray and we ask, Father, would you make us more like Jesus? Would you transform us? We ask for servanthood to your lives. Church in our English ministry, God. That our hearts will be hungry to serve you, to advance your kingdom, whether it's serving in this church, whether it's serving at school, in our works, at home, whatever it may be, God, we ask that we can do it all for you as you continue to work in us, Lord. So, God, we thank you for changing us, transforming us, Lord. Wait and expect to see what we can do in our lives, God, what we be off for our lives. So, Lord, we thank you. Once again, we surrender everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray.
we'll talk about it. And next, please. He is our speaker for next week. A quick introduction. His name is Pastor Daniel Chen. He has, well, first off, he's from Faith Christian Church in Rosemead. Um, some fun facts about him is he has six academic degrees. He studies a lot, very well experienced. He's a pastor, he was a chaplain, he was a business consultant and manager. He was an online business owner. He's just full of experiences and knowledge and he will be our speaker next week. So, yes, that's that. Now, to conclude our service, I'd like to invite PC back up to pray for us for a blessing. Let's pray. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance and give you peace. And as each and every one of us leave this place, may we carry that heart of a servant that Jesus came not to be served, but to serve and to be a ransom for many. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. small group talk and you can come to the grad party please come we have fun still planning thank you guys for coming